Oh, my lands, here we are again with another episode of the show. I'm Jay Connor, the Private Money Authority. I'm so excited to have all of you tune in uh, here to the show, and I'm so excited to have my guest today. My guest actually is a very good friend of mine. We're in a mastermind together, and I've been having to like twist his arm for a while to get his calendar freed up so he could come on. So let me tell you about my guest. First of all, he's a nationally certified life coach and leadership, and he's one of the top real estate professionals in the world. And listen to this. He is closing between 30 and 65 deals a month. That's right. I said that right, between 30 and 65. In addition to that, he's the host of a very, very popular podcast, which is called the Uncommon Real Estate Podcast. In addition to that, he's a realtor, he's an entrepreneur, and he's running multiple successful businesses in the Washington, D.C. area. Um, on top of that, he listen, listen, he consistently brings in and closes up to $10 million in revenue year after year. My lands, I am so excited to have my friend and my guest today, Chris Craddock. Hello, Chris, and welcome to the show. Jay, so excited to be with you, my friend. This is this is going to be fun, being able to spend some time together. You got that right, man. And I tell you what a rock star you are. I mean, you've got amazing success. Um, I want us to dive deep into this show about this system that you have created, which is called the REI Revive System. Um, and so we're going to dive deep. But if you could summarize what I want you to do it instead of me. If you could summarize in just two or three sentences what the REI Revive system does for real estate investors, go ahead and let's share that. I'm going to get your background story after that. Then we'll come back and dive deep into it. Yeah. I mean, anybody that's an investor understands this. If you send out marketing, do any marketing, you're going to find 20 people that raise their hand and say, I want to sell my house. Of those 20, 16 of them are going to want retail. Four of them will sell under market and maybe you lock up one as a as way, way under market as a wholesaler fix and flip, right? Well, what about those other 19? Somebody's going to get paid. It's just not going to be you, right? And so what we do is teach people how to monetize those dead leads um, and work with real estate agents so that you can monetize those dead leads. So that's, that's REO Revive in a nutshell. Yeah. So in other words, we're going to be talking about how real estate investors can not spend any more marketing dollars than they're already spending, but squeeze out a lot more profit uh, from the leads that they're already getting, even if they don't uh, buy the property, right? 100%. Yeah. I mean, all right. Best, I was just going to say, you get is what you've already paid for, right? <laughs> oh, exactly. We, we should at least get some return on it. So before we dive deep into that system and how, uh, how the real estate investor can make more money without spending more money, um, first, I want to hear your background story. How did you get into real estate? Yeah, you know, I graduated college in, in 2000. I got married right away. I went on staff with an organization called Young Life. Young Life was incredible, changed my life, um, just loved it. But, uh, you know, when my wife got pregnant, I was making 20 to $25,000 a year. And um, you, you just can't live in the D.C. area on 20 $25,000 a year. And so I went to the library, checked out every book I could find on real estate investing and just started knocking on doors and distressed properties. I made 12 times what I made in a year in about four months, which is just crazy, right? You like, you know, I, I just couldn't even believe the kind of money. But we bought the house um, that we live in now. And. Um, I continued doing real estate uh, or sorry, I continued doing ministry stuff. And, you know, now I have six kids. And if you know anything about kids, it means like basically your money just disappears really fast. And so um, I literally just was like, I got to do something. So I started uh, investing in real estate again. And um, as you know, I started making money there, there were short sales. I always led large people, large groups of people when I was in ministry. And I, Ended up going, uh, reading Gary Keller's book, uh, The Millionaire Real Estate Agent. And I was like, man, I can I can do this. Like really build a team and and make a whole heck of a lot of money. Here's a color by numbers way to make a million dollars a year. I think I, I can do this. And so we, we started building that team out. And then through uh, the success we had there, we married that with 
the investor side, which is where REI Revive came from, started a title company, got a mortgage company, a construction company, insurance, hard money, like flipping, wholesaling, all these other 13 other streams of businesses as well that all came from that vector of the real estate agent team. Well, you know, Chris, uh, you know, as well as I do, a lot of real estate investors or people that want to get into investing in real estate, um, for whatever reason, are never able to get off the ground, never really able to get things launched. Um, and at best, um, some of them struggle. They may do a deal or here, here or there. You are very different in the fact that not only were you successful and you are successful in real estate investing, but what makes you even more so different is you were very, very successful, very, very quickly. What would you say are your characteristics that lend themselves to getting you to have so much success so quickly? Well, you know, I feel like I've got, you know, oh, I do know I've got a four areas of my genius zone that I, I work hard to stay in. But the reason why I believe that I got I got to a place of success faster than most is because I think success comes from two areas, activity and skill, right? You can, I mean, literally a, a person can be a, a terrible salesperson, but if you talk to a thousand people a day, you're going to make more sales than a great salesperson that talks to two people a day. But what happens if you do all of the activity you need to do and you're leveling up like crazy, listening to all the audible books, listening to, uh, listen to podcasts like this, doing all the things to level up because your business will grow to the extent that you grow. Your life will grow to the extent that you grow. And so for me, man, I'll tell you, I just threw massive energy at this thing. Brandon Burchard says, uh, in his book, High Performance Habits, high performers um, create and produce energy. And so I threw massive energy at it, lots of activity, talked to enough people, and people just started saying yes. And so that was the crazy thing. I think everybody wants wants success, but they're not willing to do anything. I always joke for real when I teach real estate agents, I say, how do you make a real estate agent stop working? You put a phone in front of them, right? Like that's that whole idea right there is, you know, how do you make people like stop working, you ask them to do anything, right? And to, that makes money. And so that's that whole idea behind it is if you make your calls or like uh, both of us have a friend, Brent Daniels, he has a, a business called Talk TTP, talk to people, right? Like if you just go talk to people, good things are going to happen. But if you sit there just hoping they happen, they're just not going to happen. What year did you start? Well, so uh, I flipped houses in 2003 and then I, I stopped and just continued doing ministry because I made a bunch of money and was able to kind of fund the ministry piece for a long time. And then I think it was 2011, I started flipping again. And then it was December of 2014 that we really started building out our retail team. I got you. Um, so you were very, very successful, very, very quickly. But along with that, I'm sure you had some struggles and some challenges as you were starting out. And you probably learned some very, very important lessons by making mistakes as you were starting out. What were some of those early struggles and challenges you had? And what lessons did you learn from those struggles? Man, I, there's a lot, but I'll tell you about how about we'll just go with the biggest one, the craziest one, right? Because sure. I, like, I like to go big and I like to go big fast. So Jim Collins in his book, How the Mighty Fall, um, talks about a couple things that create failures for um, organizations that are doing well. And one of them is called the hubris born of success. And that happened to me and my business partners. Um, in 2011, we started making a lot of money through these flips and through these short sale flips and other stuff. And so then um, we were good at finding deals. And so we thought we just started buying every deal we could possibly buy. and um, uh, we got in, basically I was borrowing money from friends, from family, from banks, from everywhere I could could borrow money from because I found a deal. Well, what happened was we ended up having $10 million borrowed um, and we had more deals than we could handle. And so we had all these deals just sitting there dead in the water because we couldn't get them all done. So we we just thought anything we touched would turn to gold like Midas. 
And um, we just couldn't get it all done in time. And we literally almost came to a point of, uh, of bankruptcy because we just, we, we didn't know what to do. We're like, okay, well, we got friends and family. We've got to pay their money back regardless. Like their money, like we, we will pay, if, even if it takes 30 years, we pay that back. But what are we going to do with the rest? And then um, what happened was we, I mean, we did, I got more creative than I've ever been. I was doing subject to notes where I was the seller and I'm like, oh, I hate this. I don't want to be this, but this is the only way to get it done. I don't have the time, energy or money to flip these properties right now because I just have too many of them. And so we, we just had to get them off our plate. And um, yeah, me and my other business partners, we, you know, I lost over, over $600,000 and they lost a bunch of money as well. And, and we all just, we all were in it together and just, just decided that uh, none of us would ever, ever, ever um, not pay back the money to our friends and family and, and people that invested in us privately. Um, and man, it was, it was a rough go. But one of the things that one of my mentors said while I was going through it is like, everybody needs to go through some tough times. Like nobody should ever trust somebody that doesn't walk with a limp. <laughs> I hear you, man. That's a good quote. Well, uh, uh, what you just said was obviously, um, in your career, you have borrowed and funded a lot of deals with private money. Haven't you? Yeah, actually we, we have. Yep. Yeah. Well, you know, um, and I'm known as the private money authority, uh, and I know you know that, but the, the two most common questions, Chris, that I get, particularly from new real estate investors or newbies, is how do I find the deals and how do I fund the deals? And, you know, raising private money is hard if someone doesn't understand how easy it is. So, Chris, if you will bear with me for about 20 seconds, I have just finished writing a brand new private money guide that is called the seven reasons why private money will skyrocket your real estate business and help you build incredible wealth. So if you are needing private money, you're needing funding for your deals, this is free and uh, you can download it uh, after the show at uh, jayconner.com, J-A-Y-C-O-N-N-E-R.com forward slash money guide. And that will get you on the fast track to getting private money. A lot of it very, very quick. That's jayconner, J-A-Y-C-O-N-N-E-R.com forward slash money guide. Be sure and download that to get on the fast track to getting your deals funded and not missing out on any deals. So let me ask you a question, Chris. You just mentioned, I mean, you know, you lost $600,000. Uh, you lost a lot of money there, uh, in, in, you know, starting out. What is the, what is the, if you knew now, I mean, if you knew then what you know now, what is the barometer? What is the criteria? What is the red flag to keep someone from doing what you and your partners did? Um. You know, I, I would just say grow, um, grow responsibly and reasonably, right? Um, all of us, the reason why we become entrepreneurs is we, we all have a little bit of hubris, right? Because, you know, most businesses fail. So to believe that we're going to defy the odds and that we're going to be the people that don't fail and, and create, you know, massive wealth for ourselves and, and the people in our world, um, you have to have a little bit of hubris. But you also need to, if you can temper that with wisdom and understand that, um that as you grow, you need to grow um, in a way that um, that works. You know, like I mean, what is it? Most most businesses die of indigestion from then from starvation. So um, as you scale out your business, you can you can really win. So that that would be kind of the main thing that I learned from that is just that as you grow, you got to grow in in bite sized pieces, or else you're going to get yourself in a little bit of trouble. That's uh, excellent advice. Now you have devised as the way we, we briefly touched on it at the beginning of the show, but you have devised not a way you have devised a system that's called the REI revive system. And this is, as you mentioned, it's all about how to take the leads that are already coming in and squeeze more profits out of it. So you gave us the 50,000 foot view at the beginning. Now I want you to give us step by step by step as much as you can. And how does this work? 
I mean, you know, what what do, what do what does somebody have to put in place for this to work? What relationships need to be in place? How do you do the handover? Take us from start to finish. Yeah. So, um, well, I'll start with this. One of the things that that I'm learning, and and if you're an investor or a wholesaler, what I'm seeing is so many states are requiring that wholesalers get a real estate license. So just be aware that this is what's coming here in the future. So we're creating a almost a tribe within the real estate community. Um, I, I moved my business over from Keller Williams to EXP Realty because I do believe that this is what is coming. Um, and EXP allows you to create a tribe nationwide. So if you are if you're a licensed real estate agent or if you are a wholesaler that understands that this is coming and you're becoming a licensed real estate agent, please reach out to me at Cradrock on Instagram, um, C-R-A-D-D-R-O-C-K. Please reach out to me there. Now, REI Revive, what we do is teach people that when people call in, like I already talked that brief second, like you get 20 people calling in, uh, 20 people that say, I want to sell my home. Most of them are going to want to sell at a retail price, right? And so when they call in and, and want to sell at retail, what are we doing? We're sending people out to the property so that they, they're not hearing that a real estate agent is coming out. Everybody's got a friend who is a, a brother's uncle, who is a pest control person and a real estate agent, right? They don't want to talk to another real estate agent. So you're going out as a valuation expert to look at the property and then you're, you're offering them a solution to their problem, right? So one is they can go out and they can get a cash offer, right? You can give them the cash offer, but you've already kind of qualified that they, they're probably wanting closer to retail price. Number two is you could list it like everybody else, right? But in most states, you have to go to school longer to cut hair than you do to become a real estate agent. And so are you going to get the kind of results that you're looking for? Or three, um, we have a hybrid model. This hybrid model where basically we've got so many end user investors, right? Which are people that are buy and hold, people that live there, people, all the other stuff um, that are going to come in. They're going to pay closer to the amount of money that you're looking for. And we're going to get it sold almost always as is really fast and in a way that is going to make sense to you where you're not going to have to leave 35 cents on the dollar on the table. And that is, that's the, the pitch to, to the seller. And that pitch typically, I mean, that's why people are making, I mean, literally I see uh, wholesalers that were leaving all these leads dead in their CRM that are making fifty, sixty thousand dollars a month uh, in those dead leads. So that's that's the pitch behind our REI Revive program. Wow, that is amazing. Now, it would seem to me it's very, very important in this process to for the real estate investor to choose the right real estate agent to work with. So there's, there's a question. Do you advise a real estate investor to have one relationship with one real estate agent that's being fed all the leads and all the business or more than one real estate agent? Well, I mean, I'd say it's, uh, there's two, two ways to, to skin this cat. One, you can create your own team, which I think is part of where a lot of stuff is going. Um, you know, a lot of investors, a lot of folks that I coach are doing that, creating their own team and monetizing those deals themselves. But other, other than that, you can also find a real estate agent that is really great. But here's the deal, whether you do your own team, whether you find an agent or whether you're just hiring somebody in your business for something else, I don't care whether you're selling furniture or, or what, you're looking for these four character traits, happy, hungry, humble, and smart, right? If they're not happy, they're going to be just, it's just a matter of time before they get pissed off with you, before you, you cause them to not do a good job. It's your fault that they're not making the money they want. It's your fault, whatever. So if they come telling you about the old boss and why they're not happy there, it's just a matter of time before they're not going to be happy with their new boss, right? The second thing is uh, hungry, right? For people that like sit on their butt and just hope good things happen. Good for them, right? But I'll tell you what, if the door is closed, I'm climbing in the window, right? Well, 
hopefully not like in a creepy way, but you get what I'm saying, right? Like I am going to get in that. I don't take no for an answer. So happy, hungry, humble. This Now this is one of the areas where I think most people get things wrong is they think humility and confidence are like two opposing things, right? But I think they're, they're brother and sister, humility and confidence. Now, arrogance and humility are different. So here's the difference. Confident people know that they are, that they're, what they're thinking and what they're working on is the right way to go because they've spent the time, energy, and effort to understand the correct path. Um, but they're willing to listen and willing to be wrong and willing to adjust their path Arrogant people say, I'm always right, never wrong, and they never adjust where they're going, right? So just understand that. And then finally, smart. And this goes with the humility piece. Smart is not, I got perfect SAT scores or, or you know, anything like that. Smart is, I'm a quick learner, right? If I, if I screw up once on something, I'm going to play Groundhog Day and run it over and over and over in my head until I say, Man, if I had that to do a hundred times over, how could I have walked away with a signed agreement? How could I have walked away with a different outcome? And you're running that through so that you don't make the same stupid mis- decisions again and pay a stupid tax for just doing stupid things over and over and over again, right? So smart is learning how to learn from your mistakes, adjust, and make better decisions in the future. Um, in case, um, anyone has to leave the show early, Chris, I know, um, that, um, people want to learn about this revive system, how they can make more money off of the leads they got coming in. Uh, how can people find out more about this system that you're talking about and connect with you and your team? Yeah. So if anybody wants to reach out to me directly, um, you know, obviously my website is chriscraddick.com. Um, if, if you want to talk with me directly, I answer all my own Instagram DMs. So it's at Cradrock, old cheesy high school nickname, not my last name, C-R-A-D-D-R-O-C-K. And then also I have a podcast as well. Um, obviously the average podcast listener listens to seven podcasts. So keep listening here. But if you are a real estate agent and an investor um, or desire to be both of those, um, that's who my podcast is for. Um, it's called Uncommon Real Estate. So those are the areas where I kind of live and spend most of my time, you know, working with folks. Yeah. And just one more time, Chris, just a little bit slower. How do you spell your uh, Instagram for people to uh, direct message you on Instagram? Yeah, it's it's at Crad, C-R-A-D-D. R O C K crad rock old cheesy high school nickname. <laughs> awesome. And then of course your website is uh Chris Craddock, www.c H R I S Craddock C R A D D O C K dot com. All right, back to where we were, Chris. Uh I love those four characteristics of the type of people that uh you're looking for to work with. How do you find these people? Oh man, there's um, there's a number of different places that you, that you can you can find agents. So if you're an investor, everybody has investor group Facebook groups. So one of the things that I recommend is just saying, "Hey, I'm looking for an investor friendly real estate agent." Um, you know, who do you know? And then you're going to get a ton of, of, of people there. Now you'll, you'll start weeding through that. A lot of them will say, Hey, I am that person and not want to, you know, kind of work with your team or, you know, whatever, but you're at least going to get a ton of responses. If you put that in like three or four local investor Facebook groups, the second thing is I, I would say on your own social media, ask that same question. Do you know any um, investor friendly real estate agents? Um, everybody's going to start tagging their friends, but None of that will get you exactly where you want to be, but that will get you like that big top of the funnel thing. Now, then after that, you're just going to have to pre-qualify for happy, hungry, humble, and smart. Do you uh, actually give them uh, any kind of uh, test or self-test that uh, helps you and your team um, pre-qualify these people? Yeah, we send uh, we send people through. We're actually working on this um, to get a little bit better on this, but we send people through the disc profile, and if uh, if they're going to be working on listings like this, um, they need to be at least a um, at least a 
uh, 50% or above uh, D on that profile. Um, you know, and then there's, there's some other profiles that I've got a recruiter that I work with personally um, that will, will do a number of other, you know, testings, but I, I do think just the disc profile and making sure they're 50% or more on that front. Now in my program, I teach people the questions that they, they can ask um, to understand, are you happy, hungry, humble, and smart? And if you're asking questions around that, um, what were you doing before? Do you love doing that? You know, happy, you know, questions around happy, hungry, um, you know, are you, you know, where do you want to be in a year? Where are you now? And, and find out whether they, they have bigger dreams and aspirations than what they're doing now. And if they don't, then they're probably not hungry, humble. What books are you reading? What podcasts are you listening to? What, you know, what are you doing to level up your life? What conferences are you going to all of that? And then smart. Um, tell me about a couple of times where you've missed, you know, missed bad. What have you done to, to level up? you know, in that area? How have you grown in that area? You know, so questions like that are, are questions that we were going to ask around those four categories. Those are fantastic questions and very, very wise to ask those questions. I mentioned this uh, earlier in the show, and that is, you know, the two most common popular questions that I get today is how do I fund the deals? And secondly, how do I find deals? Um, I've been full time at this real estate investing thing, Chris, since 2003. And I would say right now is since at least the past year, um, it's more challenging to find deals than ever before. For one reason, there's no inventory in the multiple listing service. Some um, bank owned properties and foreclosures have been shut down the last couple of years. Uh, however, that's opening up and is opening up pretty quick. So all the deals that I myself and my team are doing are off market deals. In other words, they're not in the multiple listing service. I'm in such a small area. My population, my total target market is only 40,000 people. And myself and my team, we use eight different platforms and strategies every day to get consistent seller leads coming in. My question to you is, what are you using today that is performing the best to get you motivated seller leads? Oh, man. I'll tell you, there's a, there's a number of op options. But one of my favorite, I'll just say my favorite one, because you're just not competing with anything else, is going to Deal Machine. Um, there's a code uncommon if you're not doing that and just driving for dollars, right? Um, you're already going out. You're already doing things anyway. Jim Collins talks about the genius of the and you know, might as well just go a different way in a neighborhood and just click on any house that looks like it's dilapidated or under the, the, you know, the upkeep of the rest of the neighborhood. And then you just skip trace to all those numbers that come up and you call them, text them, uh, send a quick postcard and boom, for every 150, you should be getting a deal. And then if you use the revive program, you should be able to get paid on some other deals there. So yeah, that, that would be my, you know, my immediate thought. Yeah. Well, I couldn't uh, agree with you more. In fact, I have a part-time Marine that's uh, in the Marines right now. We're, we're right here uh, close to Cherry Point Naval Air Station. And um, that's what he does on the side. He drives on the weekends. He looks for, you know, vacant houses that uh, need some upkeep. And uh, he sends us the addresses. And then we do exactly what you just said. We skip trace them. And then we, you know, we run them down. Um, I got another question for you, Chris. Okay. A mastermind that uh, I'm in, uh, uh, separate and apart from the one that you and I are in, um, at a recent meeting, uh, one of my colleagues, I heard them say, on every settler lead that comes in, every settler lead that comes in, doesn't matter what the pre-qualifying is that happens over the phone. Doesn't matter what the conversation is. Every lead that goes in, they go, he and his team go to every house of every lead. Uh, what's your, what's your take on that? What's your opinion on that strategy? I think that's uh, going to every single house. I think that that's a, a tough thing. If you are, <sighs> Yeah. I mean, I get what, what you're talking about. If you're starting out, I think that's great. Or if you have a lot of extra manpower, but at some point I'm personally a big fan of working hard, but also working smart. 
And if you pre-qualify that somebody has no pain, um, yeah, I just, I, I just wouldn't drive out. I think that's, I think you start wasting time at some point. So yeah, get the idea, but I, and I never want to, you know, I never want to poo poo on somebody else's ideas. Um, uh, but I don't know who, who it is, but I would just say if somebody doesn't have pain, if somebody, you know, just wants something, you know, foolish for their house, I, I would probably say, I don't know that that is going to be a good fit for my time. Well, you and I agree. I was just, I was just curious if, if I had found somebody else that yeah. was doing that. Yeah, you're right. I mean, you know, the people that we buy from have got a problem. They've either yeah. got a, they got a personal problem or the property's got a problem. And most of the time it's both, Right, <laughs> right. you know? Um, and so we lead with, we lead with a servant's heart. Uh, we do everything that we can to help these people. And those are the properties that we uh, end up buying. Uh, Chris, you have just got a wealth of knowledge one more time on how people can connect with you and then parting comments uh, from you. Yeah. Um, so you're, you're just asking for parting comments. I'm sorry. Is that what you said? Yeah. Fi final comments. Any, any other advice you'd like to give either a newbie or a seasoned real estate investor? Yeah. So what I would just say is this one, if you are in real estate, just know that the agent investor piece is coming together. Um, anybody that's seen what happened with PropStream, I know there's a lot of stuff behind it, but the reality is NAR, the National Association of Realtors has a lot of money and they're going to be bringing, uh, you know, this, this to bear where people are going to have to get licensed. So definitely start considering that and looking at that now. Um, and, and you, you just really want to think through where is the best place to put your time energy when you start doing that. And so that's what we're really working to build out is a place that is, um, is going to help everybody that is agent investor kind of friendly, one-stop shop friendly. So I, I would love to talk to you on that front. Second is understand that your business is going to grow to the extent that you grow, right? If you're not spending at least a half an hour, but I recommend an hour a day in personal development on podcasts, audiobooks, reading, like just, just all of the different things that you, you can do to level up your life and think bigger. I mean, the amount of mentors that we have access to that you don't even have to know anymore, literally will shape the way you think about the world. You've just got to get into that. Just remember activity and skill every day, do the work and get better at what you're doing. That's awesome. Chris, thank you so much for joining me on the show today. Jay, this is awesome. I'll tell you what, I've always had great respect for you and I'm so excited to be able to spend some time with you, my friend. That's awesome. There you have it, folks. Another episode of this show. I'm Jay Connor, the Private Money Authority, wishing you all the best. Here's to taking your business to the next level and we'll see you right here on the next show. And of course, we always appreciate subscribing, rating, reviewing, liking, sharing. If you're watching us on YouTube, be sure and uh, ring that bell so you get notified not to miss any other episodes. And if you happen to be uh, listening to us on iTunes, uh, we really appreciate your comments and the five-star reviews. We'll see you right here on the next show. That was amazing, Chris. And just so you know, we are raw.